meaning of life really is to uh, live a life of purpose and to make the world a better place through somehow, through some small contribution to assist someone else. I am Tanisha Tate. My name is Jacques Philippe P. Velger. My name is Majora Carter. My name is Ryan Mack. My name is Tamika Flowers Holland. My name is Nuna Sylvia Tomlinson Clark. I'm an immigrant from Jamaica and uh, arrived in the United States in 1958 as a foreign student, um, attended um, what was then Brooklyn Community College, Long Island University, New York University, and Columbia. I'm a Caribbean New Yorker. I identify the, the journey that I have made, but I remember from whence I came and to whom I belong. In 2009, I created an organization called the Global Syndicate, and the impetus for creating the organization was a trip I took to Haiti, which coincided with food riots. And so when I came back from that trip, I told all my friends that, you know, all this great work that we're doing with respect to affecting change here in the States is awesome. But once that's done, that can't be it. It can't be over at that juncture. The Majora Carter Group is a revitalization strategist, and we're a consultant that works locally to help revitalize communities around the country. I've seen what it's like to be from a community that people had written off and to know that when you give folks the right tools and strategies to really think about how you can create opportunities that support you know, the businesses, the people that are living in, in your community, the municipalities, and that if you can figure out ways that create holistic systems that support all of them, that's really exciting. Hip Hop for Life is a champion of youth development. The uh, purpose of the organization is to provide interactive life skills training and health awareness workshops that are designed to engage, educate, and empower young people to lead extraordinary lives. 30 second pitch is that within Optimum, you have a lot of individuals who are experts in financial literacy, who have a passion for teaching it. And not only have a passion for teaching it, are able to help you implement this uh, within your lives. I actually was putting together workshops in schools where we brought in professionals who worked behind the scenes in entertainment. We went to different schools in Manhattan and Brooklyn and the Bronx and we brought celebrities in. But also we brought people who worked behind the celebrities. I was one of the speakers that Tanisha yes. would bring in. So we'd have conversations mm -hmm. like, these young people, like, they don't even know how to shake a hand. They're not looking you in the mm -hmm. eye. They don't know how to articulate and present themselves. Mm -hmm. So we came up with the concept to create Hip Hop for Life to address a lot of those issues. I was born and raised in the South Bronx in New York City in a pretty environmentally and economically challenged community and I spent probably the first 27 years of my life running away from it and only came back home uh, because financially I was broke and but I came back and discovered a community that was in crisis but not in the way that I initially thought. When I realized that that's when I realized I wanted to be a part of a movement that worked to create alternatives. I think I've always been really excited about other people and making sure that we're all on equal footing. In 09, you know, well before the earthquake, Haiti was already in a really tough situation. Just the previous year it had been hit by you know, three different hurricanes and people were just living in subpar means. So at our core, the organization is focused on education, economic development, and healthcare. Basically uh, building capacity for the individuals in Haiti. September 2004, I got my first job offer. I was so excited, man, I was happy. I said, look, I'm gonna take this job, and you all, I'm gonna blast your company all throughout the community. And they said, well, you know, I just have to tell you that, uh, you know, unless you only work with high net worth individuals, everything else is a waste of time. 
So that crushed me because my that meant that my mother and everybody else would not be able to benefit from what I was doing. Right. I went home that night. I wrote a letter of rejection to the offer, and technically the next day is when I said, "Look, you know, I just think that God is pushing me to start my own thing." I came from a background of activists. I didn't start out being a politician. I started out in the financial industry, um, studying banking. I left from that into education and was an educator for some 17, 18 years. And then when my call came to be an elected official, I looked at opportunities to make a difference on behalf of the community and to stay true to my own call to make sure that I lift up those who need to be lifted up. Nineteen ninety one, thirty eight votes, less than point one percent of the vote. In my next election, which was two years later, I won by ninety four percent of the vote and I went up to ninety six for my other two elections. As the first ever immigrant from any place, uh, never mind a black immigrant, to be elected to the New York City Council, I understand both that responsibility that I have for other immigrants who come after me and aspire to make their contribution and that you just don't look at yourself as the centerpiece of it, you look at the impact that you have on other human beings. Look, people don't always get what we do and why we spend so much time with Hip Hop for Life. But I realize that um, people don't always don't see your, your dreams in color like you do. We started this organization funding it ourselves up until fairly recently, mm -hmm. coming out of pocket until our accountant was like, you can't do this anymore. You're giving everything you make to the organization. You're not making a living. The first actual curricula we implemented for Hip Hop for Life was Shades of Beauty, and we addressed w images of women as portrayed in entertainment and media. A little while after that came Man Up, which is for the boys, and um, that really addresses issues of what it means to be a man, respect, um, um, uh, relationships, responsibility. And then two years ago, we launched The Rhythm, and The Rhythm is a self-esteem enrichment and obesity prevention program, so that's the one that we get young people active. I started one of the country's very first green collar job training and placement systems. And the idea was to train people, you know, folks that were generationally impoverished, folks that you're ex offenders, um, you know, in the skills in the field of ecological restoration. So learning how to do for you know urban forestry and green roofing and learning how to clean up contaminated lands to um, so that they can be reused. And um, so we set up this training program to do that. And you know, people that came weren't really looking for, you know, to be great environmentalists or anything like that. They were looking for a job. I remember one point went to just an, an event, you know, about greening you know, at the Botanical Gardens in, in New York one day, and, you know, one of the folks that spoke was a young woman that went through our program. As she was presenting, you know, the, the results of her work, um, you know, and how they, like, you know, actually identified all these, like, this species of, of, of plants and animals that no one even knew was in the river and how they were supporting the educational and economic rebirth, you know, of things that were going on there. And she called me out by name to express the fact that, you know, here was a, she was a single mom on welfare and had no real, no real direction in her life, but, you know, through this understood that she played a role, you know, not just in supporting her family, but really playing a part in terms of how she could make the world a better place. You know, and this was a, a young woman who really, who, who just knew what the world thought of her, you know, as a young Latina, you know, who wasn't, it wasn't particularly educated or anything like that, but who suddenly like developed this sense of power and worth that you know, I'll, I'll never forget that. When we bring the supplies, you know, the kids are so excited and they're happy, they want to learn. Uh, that experience is something that's very fulfilling and rewarding and to know that you might have you know, some kind of a positive impact on an individual in a real way that may change their lives. So that's, that's huge. And then I think it's also important to realize the value from a personal perspective. So the fact that I just enjoy it. If you did, wouldn't know me, you would think I was a real quiet person because I am kind of introverted. But I like to listen. And I was listening to these brothers speak about the problems that they were having uh, in the community shooting each other. I was tired of people, bullets flying in, in, in the Brooklyn community as well. I, I want to make sure that 
we can keep these folks off the streets. And the best way to keep people off the streets is help get a job for them. So I looked at the leader of the Bloods and I, I, I went up to him after the meeting. I said, look, meet me on the corner of uh, Fulton and Vanderbilt and I'll treat you to a, a sausage and cheese omelet. And we sat down that next morning, 9 a.m., he was on time, and we started to vibe. And we just vibed and vibed and vibed. And long story short, I said, man, how much money you got on? He said, I got up 300 bucks. We said, I want to take that 300 and help you teach you how to take that into a successful company. He'd already had his electrician's license. I walked him through the process. We formed the LLC. We went to the IRS.gov, got his EIN number. We went to the bank to open up his bank account. We took the remaining dollars, the $75 or so after he got to his LLC and paid for the filing fees. We, we got some flyers and we started passing those around. We started doing a couple email blasts for him. We said, look, now he has his own TSD construction company. And about six months later, he had over 10 employees and two project managers. We need times during the year where sometimes we take a moment to say, well, wait a minute, let me show you other examples of people who are just like you, who've overcame. They've been successful. They've been to the mountaintop and back again. They've taken, they've taken others with them. So to see that will build confidence enough to say, if they can do it and they're just like me, then I can do it. At the turn of the 20th century and the early 20s, Business was a big deal, and that's how names were made. So Vanderbilt, Carnegie, Rockefeller, those were business people. And with that said, even then, those are still not bigger names than Martin Luther King or Gandhi and people who you know, speak truth to power. I would gander to say that in the 21st century, uh, leaders are going to come out of the philanthropic space. It's going to come down to what were you able to do for society to make it better. I do not think the dream, you know, has been realized by any stretch of the imagination. The interesting thing about it is that it does allow us to think about the legacy that we not only are you have, but also the legacy that we're going to leave. And that's why I think that this moment in time is just so crucial. The system placed me where I was a, a statistic. I had to play the role of being a victim. And I had a teacher who taught me to transfer from being a victim to a victor. So I went from a low class into being the first African American in my school to be National Honor Society. There's been times, even recently, where I've just been like, I'm not, I can't do this anymore. And every time you feel like you can't, something will always happen or somebody will always be placed there for you to show you that, you know what, don't give up. What you're doing is, is having a positive impact. You're doing what you love, don't give it up. I would give advice to anybody and everybody. Um, follow your own dreams. God has blessed each of us with our own gifts and talent. If you find yours and use it, you won't have to worry about mine. So I always say to people, don't stay in my way. If I tell you I'm going to do something, I am just going to um, do it. I may have a lot of trouble getting where I want to go, but I'm not going to turn back. What makes me different here is my relentless pursuit to turn my dreams into realities. What makes me different here is the fact that I've lived so many lives. It's really allowed me to be able to connect because I can truly say that I understand. What makes me different here is the fact that I want a smaller government by creating jobs for our most expensive citizens. What makes me different here is that I believe in a world that everyone matters. What makes me different here is the fact that I'm a gnat and I will never stop and I'll continue to fight for success every single day. What makes me different here is that I believe in all of humanity. It doesn't matter religion, it doesn't matter race, it doesn't matter status or from whom you come. There is goodness in all of us. Maybe some of our history makers will inspire you to make history too.
That's my hood. I love my people. I love what it's gonna become. I love what it is and I love what it's been through, the fact that it's gonna help us be even stronger than we were. Stronger than we think we are.